So hey, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm gonna show you guys today how to put in some threaded inserts. I get that question every once in a while some, uh, so from some folks that I've met uh, online. And um, I've been doing a lot of threaded inserts. At first they're a little bit scary. I've seen people use things such as um, presses or all kinds of other ways of putting in these threaded inserts. But today, I'm gonna show you how to simply put in some threaded inserts into PETG, which will also work with ABS or PLA materials. Uh, and I've also done it with the nylon X like carbon fiber. The two biggest things that you're gonna use is a soldering iron, and it can be any soldering iron. As you can see, this one's not the best in the world, pretty inexpensive. A pair of pliers for holding a piece of brass that's uh, fairly hot and your threaded inserts. Um, there's two types of threaded inserts that I'm gonna put in. One of them be some very small 8x32 uh, threaded inserts, and then some M8 threaded inserts, which are a little bit bigger. Um, so to assist with the larger ones, um, we're gonna have a low torch. And you may wanna have a drill in case you have a little bit of material inside your hole that you need to drill down first. Here's a nice large piece of PETG material that we printed out. And as you can see, I've already put in three small 8x32 threaded inserts in here, and they came out quite nice. They're in, they're flush, no special press over here at all, and there's no material buildup. So the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're doing this is you're going to need to take this drill, and using the drill, you want to look down at your holes to see if you've got any material that's left over in these holes that you want to drill out. Because what will happen is when you put these threaded inserts in, if these holes are too thin, or there's excess material in there, or they're too shallow, then that material is going to seep up into the actual threaded insert. So you can see there's a touch there, but it's at the very bottom, and I know from experience on this that I'm not going to have any problems with my, uh, my screws in there, because i got plenty of room. All right, so you're going to want to take the drill and get a drill bit on your drill that is almost identical in size to the very end of your uh, threaded insert. So using this small threaded insert as an example, as you can see on here, it's actually flared. This is a plastic insert. The other one's a wooden insert. Um, but if you look at this, you can tell that one end is slightly smaller than the other. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure the end of this threaded insert and try to pick a drill bit, believe it or not, that's the same size as the end of this, okay? Because if it's too small, then you can have material coming up on the inside or all over the place, all right? If it's too big, then when your threaded insert goes down in, it's gonna plop down in and then it's not gonna seat right, okay? So all you really need to do is make sure that it's the same size, right about the same size as the inside of this hole. If you're printing it and you're trying to print your holes perfectly, then try to match up the size of the hole of this opening of the small size with the printer that you're uh, with the um, um, setting the the measurement on your CAD software in order to be able to print the holes the right diameter to begin with. Okay, but that doesn't always work, especially in this case. I've got a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, so it's very hard to get it to match up right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our drill. Okay, we're going to come over to each one of the holes, and we're just going to simply drill it out. Just make sure that we got all the extra stuff out of here so it's nice and clean on the inside, okay? Then, we're gonna come in and we're gonna put in our insert. Now when you do a smaller piece of a threaded insert, this is a brass piece. As you can see, it is a plastic uh, threaded insert. It's got these little different diameter, or sorry, different uh, directional grooves in it. And you're gonna hold this with something that can take the heat. Okay, now I've actually gotten to the point I can actually just stick it in there and just start working with it. Um, but you're gonna wanna ha hold it, uh, you know, hold it down. And I've seen people talk about don't get it too hot, uh, don't push down too hard. Try practicing with a piece of plastic that you really don't need. And you'll see it's really not that hard. It's kind of actually hard to screw these things up too, as long as you've got enough material to play with. So the idea is that you're gonna put the soldering iron against this and it's gonna heat up this brass, okay? But this brass is not hot right now, okay? So I haven't done anything with it. See, I can hold it with my hand, so I haven't even done anything. So you can see how fast this is gonna actually heat up on its own. So what I've found, and I don't need to press to do this because I've got, look, I've got a couple flat sides of this thing, right? And I got a flat surface right here. So I can just judge based on that, and then it's actually gonna work pretty well. Um, so to show you how fast this is gonna go, 
I can take this guy and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but right before I put it on, I'm gonna put it up against my soldering iron. And then I'm gonna stick it in and then hold it in place. And you'll see that after about, you know, 10 seconds or so, with, with, with just a, a slight push on here, it's gonna start sinking down. So you can see it's already going. So yeah, I'm not forcing it, but I'm also, also not using a press because you can't always get a press to fit in all the angles you actually want. So you need to get good at this just with your hand. And you wanna, as you, as you go down, because you want plastic to fill in around those grooves, you wanna twist it just a little bit so that that plastic can melt. And as it goes down deeper and deeper, you can see that it's, it start, it's, it's down almost to the surface. And again, I can take this thing off and check if it's flat or not, which clearly it's not, okay? And it's still hot, so I've still got plenty of time to come back and mess with this and get it down again. And once this guy's all the way down to where I want it to be, then I'm just gonna look straight down at it and kind of straighten it out. So it's pretty straight. Visually, it looks straight. And as you can see, when I look at this one, it's flat. And again, there's no material up inside there. And guess what? This thing's still a little hot. So if I need to adjust it a little bit, like if I want to put a screw in here and check to see if it's upright or not upright, I can actually do that. And I can actually wiggle it into place. And there are times where I've taken these things and I'm not quite sure, and I'll put them in really fast. And then I'll put my piece, that, uh, uh, the part that I'm gonna screw against this, and I'll drop some screws in there. And, um, and then just make sure that they're up and down if I need to. But in general, when you're dealing with stuff like this, you can pretty much eyeball this and you're gonna be, you're gonna be just fine. All right, so let's just do the rest of these real quick. That's it. So as you can see, these guys all went in nice and smooth. And at the end, I didn't even use the, um, the needle nose. All right, and these are actually amazingly strong. When they get in there, they're really in there. And if you do pull one out, so that's a great question, right? What if you go to use one of these and it actually does fail on you? Um, well, you know what you do? You get yourself a 3D pen and you fill that hole back in with some ABS plastic. And then you just take your drill and you drill it back out once it, uh, once it dries completely and that'll actually work fine, just do it again. Now, what do you do if you've got a really big one? So for example, this is an eight x 32. This, on the other hand, is an M8. Okay, there's a big difference between these. This is gonna take a little while to heat this up, and I've actually done some a lot larger than this one as well. Some actual um, wood furniture ones too, that is, that is sunk into plastic. So the difference between the two is not just the size of these, it's how long is it gonna take to heat up? Right, and is it gonna fit in as well? You know, especially if you're in a time crunch. So, uh, kind of the same processes, except we're gonna use a blowtorch in order to help speed up the process of heating this bigger piece up. And that's gonna be kind of a trial and error, all right? Um, take, a look at, take a look at these holes. All right, we're talking about some much bigger holes, but, because uh, we're talking about something like this, or something like this, or something like this, all right? And on these, again, once again, you wanna make sure that the diameter that you have for the hole is about the same as the opening diameter for your threaded insert, all right? So you can see this threaded insert doesn't quite fit in this hole. You just want that, that hole to be just a little bit smaller in diameter than the tip of this threaded insert. So that way it gives a chance for the uh, heat to melt that plastic out of the sides and push up the sides of this. And you don't want it to come up on the inside. All right, so in order to do that, the first thing that you want to do again with these holes is the same thing. You're going to want to make sure that you've got a nice clear hole down in there, right? You can see the light shining from this, this hole and uh, so that's nice and cleaned out. In this particular case, these actually printed out really well. 
but sometimes you'll get maybe a little stringing, um, you know, maybe a little bit extra piece in there. And then you're gonna wanna kinda you know, either reach in and clean it out however you normally clean holes out. You know? Uh, or, once again, take a bigger drill bit and clean that out. Like, like right here, I got a touch of string. Now this isn't gonna get in my way with anything, but if it was a bit more than that, I might actually kind of worry about that. All right, now, once you actually get uh, your holes ready and they're all prepped, this is a piece of cake, what you do now. So then, on this one, you're definitely gonna need your um, needle nose uh, pliers, because this is gonna get pretty darn hot. All right, because what we're gonna do is now we're gonna heat this with this blowtorch for a few seconds till we feel that it's hot enough. And again, that's gonna come with experience as to how long it's going to take. And then we use our soldering iron from there to put it into position and keep it hot as we press down and uh, kind of a coordinated effort. Now, another way that you could actually get these warm or warmer before you start with the uh, soldering iron is maybe if you've got like a little hot plate you can turn it to a certain temperature and have multiple sitting on a hot plate. All right, but you, we're just gonna use strictly the uh, blowtorch right now. That should be enough. That was about, I don't know, three or four seconds. All right, and we're gonna pop, pop this guy down on here. And if it feels like it's too hot, then it probably is. Maybe it sinks too much. In which case, then you're gonna want to um, slow that whole process down again. It should go down in and kind of sit there and kind of sink down on its own. You see how I've got plenty of time here to mess with this? starts to sink down a bit more than where you want it to be and that means it's too hot and you're either going to want to put a bolt in there and hold it or you can put your needle nose pliers in here and kind of pull back up on it and let it cool down while you're holding on to it. So these take a little bit more finesse than the other ones do but as you can see this guy's quite level and you can do that across the board with the rest of these and they should hold should hold quite well. Hey, so I hope that uh, helps you with figuring out how to set 3D inserts using uh, flame uh, or other methods, you know, such as using the soldering iron. But as far as big parts go, not to be afraid of this. It's really not a very difficult uh, thing to do. And uh, good luck with all of that. And um, happy 3D printing.